Hello everybody, I'm Dibendu Ganguly reporting for Vibes of India. I'm at the Hathi Singh Haveli of Ghikata Road in Ahmedabad's old city. Now for those of you who may or might not have heard of the Hathi Singh name, the Hathi Singh family is a famous old business family of Ahmedabad and they're particularly well known for the Hathi Singh Temple, a Jain Derasar which they built and which is quite a, a tourist attraction in Ahmedabad. Now this Haveli in Ahmedabad's old city has been restored by the Hathi Singh Sayan Umang Hathi Singh, who we will be meeting later on to ask him what he is doing with this Haveli. <laughs> that bears uh, Umang Hathi Singh's name and Umang Hathi Singh will be joining me soon. Now the Hathi Singh family, for those of you who haven't heard the name, is a famous business family of Ahmedabad known for building the Hathi Singh temple which is quite a tourist attraction in Ahmedabad. Uh, this Haveli of theirs uh, on Ghikata Road uh, in old Ahmedabad has been painstakingly restored over, I think, 10-15 years by Hathi Singh Sayan, Umang Hathi Singh. And you can see the results. It's really a fantastic uh, uh, place. And let's hear from Umang. So why have you uh, moved your boutique from uh, Sindhu Bhavan Road to the Haveli? You know, we, um, we have been here mm -hmm. In fact, at the Haveli, as a design firm since 1835, uh -huh. you know, we're the oldest design firm of Asia, uh -huh. and it was created in, in as, as a public works project. Uh -huh. The great famine of you know, Western India. There were six lakh employees, which had, I mean, refugees that come to uh, Ahmedabad uh -huh. in the sake of uh, welfare, and Sheikh Hathi Singh and Harkuwa Shetani looked after their welfare, and to give them employment, the Hathi Singh temples were built. Mm -hmm. And that is how our journey began with art uh, and uh, art patronage on a, on a larger scale, not just as a personal right. collection. And from that, uh, it was all started from here. Okay. So this Haveli is... Uh, it was built uh, in 1830, 1881. Wow. But this property has been there since for a longer time. And this, the design studios were here. And I would be the fifth generation. Right operating the same family, the same place, the same studios with a design firm. And the history of the design firm goes that we did the interiors of the East of the White House with, uh, with Tiffany and we did the home of Queen Victoria right. with uh, Lockwood Kipling, the right. you know, Osborne House. Yes, I heard about that, the Washington uh, project and the British project. Yes, yeah. so, I mean, yeah, people don't know that Ahmedabad was involved mm. in the designing of two of the most powerful homes in the world. From here. You've restored this Haveli very painstakingly and very beautifully. When did the project begin? Now, restoration? Uh, the, the restoration project started 25 years ago. Okay. You know, I came back from America in 96, and uh, at that time, you know, India was very different. Mm -hmm. And the Wall City did not have much scope, mm -hmm. and people were leaving it, and I uh, and this place was in shambles. Mm. And I told my father that I would rather restore this than have, you know, property, mm. you know, in uh, what is now part of Amdavid, that time of the suburb, whether it's Gandhi Nagar area, or Bhopal, or wherever. And every thought I was mad. <laughs> and they still think I'm mad because I mean, those, those properties are worth, you know, phenomenal amounts now to become urban zones. Uh, well, this is still. Uh, not as valuable monetarily, but I think heritage once lost is lost forever and you can't regain it. So what was your idea of this uh, restoration? Were you, uh, you know, was it meant to be a hotel or some sort of retreat? Or? No, it was meant to be a cultural uh, museum okay. that would house the family's collections okay. 
and uh, remain as an icon of an uh, important Nagashit property for the generations of young Indians to come. You know, uh, my friend Rajiv Patel, who's uh, restored the French Haveli, in, uh, uh, he was uh, telling me that it took him two crores to uh, you know, restore it. And then he was giving me a return on investment calculation that if it took me two crores, then at least I should expect a 10% return on investment annually, uh, which means 20 lakhs. Oh, your, your, this must have cost much more than that, right? And do you get a return on investment? I'm not a builder. <laughs> and uh, he is, was restoring a building that he bought. Right. I'm restoring a building that is my family's legacy. Right. You can't buy legacy. Right. And you don't restore legacy. Mm -hmm. You live it. There's no return on investment on legacy. Abhay Mangaldas has made quite a success of that House of MG, which is made into a heritage hotel. Did you ever think of doing that? You know, um, no, I haven't. Okay. There are a couple of reasons why. Um, Abhay is my first cousin. Yeah. And uh, that building is right in the, f you know, Junction uh, of many roads. Yes, yes, and that was built in 1838. Uh, yeah. I mean, 1938. Okay. It's a relatively new building. All right, yes. While uh, this property was far, far, far more ancient. Right. And in, it was within the wall city. Right. So, uh, both have their pros and cons. Right. But making this into a hotel, uh, first of all, you know, uh, it is not my thing. Mm -hmm. I'd rather make it a museum. Right. right. Now you've moved your boutique here from Sindhu Bhavan uh, Mart. That must be good for you, right? Well, Having it right to here. To be very honest, it was for 11 years here. Okay. Okay. And then, I mean, no, for, for nine years here, and then we moved to Sindhu Bhavan for okay. this period and moved back because uh, you go to Sindhu Bhavan store and it's a store, mm -hmm. you know. It's a, you know, how it doesn't matter how beautiful it is, it's mm -hmm. still one of the stores on Sindhu Bhavan Road. Mm -hmm. While being back here, mm -hmm. we are in a Haveli that, mm -hmm. you know, is in the UNESCO World Heritage City, right. in a World Heritage Building, right. preserving World Heritage Craft. Right. But you probably don't get uh, walk-ins anymore. <laughs> People have to come specifically for... Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't that better? It is, it is, yes. I mean, people who come here come here with a, with knowledge and a vision, and understanding of craft and product. Walk-ins come in because they walk in, not necessarily knowledgeable. It makes business sense also. I suppose leasing a, such a large space on Sindhu Bhavan Marg was must have been expensive, right? Expense or returns. Mm -hmm are not part of this story. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Sindhu Bhavan Road was not the image mm -hmm. that I carry. Mm -hmm. okay. so you don't uh, really identify with business, I mean, though you're That's, a business but, family in a way. But no, it's not identify with business. Mm -hmm. Certain things mm -hmm. like legacy, mm -hmm. identity, mm -hmm. uh, role in society mm -hmm. are not business. Right. They're legacy mm -hmm. and they come with a formulation. You know, how many people in Sindhu Bhavan Road can say, I sit in my office of 550 years. I can when I sit here. Right. You know, and across the world, that earns respect. You know, so think of it. What, you know, people in India, India don't understand the importance of World Heritage City or what it means or what it narrates. Mm -hmm. History has great importance in civilization. Mm -hmm. No, and there, you know, if we do not have history, mm -hmm. we don't understand our roots. Mm -hmm. So we are in a World Heritage City. 
if you go to Rome, if you go to Paris, if you go to Barcelona, if you go to Kyoto, mm. the most expensive part mm. and the most prestigious part of all these cities is the central area of heritage city. Mm. Yeah. How have uh, you know, Ahmedabad's efforts to revive its old city, restore some of the buildings, mm. all those plans, how are they going? I mean, are they... I tell you, you know, mm. When there is too much of anything, mm. it doesn't hold value. Mm. We as a civic society mm. are just coming... See, when people don't have grey goods, how can you talk of culture? Mm. The people in India are still struggling with, you know, basic uh, infrastructure and civics, which we are fast growing. Mm. And so, the awareness of cultural heritage will come. Mm in a larger social context only when the next generation has grown up and learned to value it. Do you see yourself uh, restoring any more buildings in the old city? I am not a restorer or a builder. I look after my family heritage. Ah. Mm. That's Rajiv restored a building he bought. He bought it for an economic investment. Right. I restored this because it's my family home. Do you live in a home? Right. Of course I do, yeah. <laughs> do you have done its interiors? Yes. I have. What is the return on investment? <laughs> so you spend much more time what is here? So, <laughs> no, there's obviously So not, this yeah. is my family home. This is not my, you know. So if I destroy my family home, there is no return on investment. You are coming here. I asked a few people, where's the Hathi Singh Aveli? And they said, it's a Shahi bag. I said, no, no, there's another one here. But so no, how much so, time so, do you so, spend so, so, in so, so, uh, two let, places? Let me clarify. The Hati Singh Haveli and Wadi is in Shahibad. Okay. This is called, and I've written to Jay Singh Bhaini Wadi. Achha. This is older than that. Okay. Jay Singh Bhai was Hati Singh's grandfather. I see. And this is his property. Oh, I see. Okay. So when I send you the address, it's written very clearly. Uh, Hati Singh Haveli located in Jay Singh Bhaini Wadi. Oh, I see. So, you know, uh, that, uh, this is the grandfather, that is the grandson. Okay. So now you divide your time between uh, your house in Shaibag and this place? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I mean, I don't live here, okay. but I spend a lot of time here. We do a lot of... Um, and besides my boutique, there's a lot more here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we do a lot of, you know, uh, we maintain the standards of Ahmedabad High. And uh, welcome many, many, many uh, important guests <coughs> and even state guests. Right. Over here. I've heard about that. Who, yeah. are, who have you hosted? Uh, you know, I mean, Narendra Bhai has been here, the mayor of France has been here, uh, Queen of Bhutan, King of Nepal, uh, several, several, several industrial, political, and other celebrities. In fact, um, Gandhi ji has stayed here, Tagore has stayed here, uh, Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, Nehru, Sardar Patel. I mean, uh, from the history, I mean, from early part of history, many, many, many have been in this building. But looking around, you could very well turn this into some sort of high street shopping area because every other brand might want to set up a shop here. <laughs> Yes, you know, uh, the, uh, the, there are enough malls that have come up. <laughs> I'm not a mall. Not on Ghikata Road. <laughs> uh, the most prestigious roads across the world in, in developed cities, even in Milan, is the Ahis Historic Roads. Right. And the idea is, this is my brand, this is my family thing. And we are an old design company, so it will only carry our, our family brand and legacy. Of course, I mean, uh, we from you know what brand started. Mm. Tiffany and Co started from here. Yeah. I drink with grandfather and Louis Tiffany were partners. Mm. We were also with Lockwood De Forest, mm. uh, Lucia Hennessy, Jill Hennessy's mm. wife, who owns LVMH, has been here. We've done things for her. We've done so. We do we do customized design bespoke things for people across the world. Right. And you'd be surprised, but we from over here have put three hundred pieces of handcrafted costumes right. in museums across the world. You've been described as a textile revivalist. Yes. Uh, what 
what uh, exactly does that mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, today many people are using that term for themselves. I mean, mm-hmm. my, my tagline of timeless treasures is today used by so many. Uh, when I use the word textile, I don't even use the word textile revivalist, I use cultural revivalist, royal cultural revivalist. Because textile is part of culture, architecture is also part of culture, cuisine is also part of culture, there are so many things that are part of culture. And uh, but textile being a larger visual entity, you know, uh, we've done a revival of so many crafts mm-hmm. which were going extinct. Because you know, with the advent of you know, industrialization, mm-hmm. Most of the hand hand loom and handcrafted textiles were had given way to machine made, mm-hmm. you know, because it was easier, it was cheaper, it was nicer, it was the trend through the sixties, seventies, eight, and the decline in textile craft. And then, who was the biggest patron of of great uh, textiles? Were the royal families mm-hmm. and temples. Mm-hmm. Patronage of both declined through our socialistic era of creating a new and modern India. Right. Mm-hmm. Today, as we enter new phases in India, as a confident and modern nation, we realize the importance of preserving our living heritage as much as it is important to preserve material heritage. And so we here, in our historic heritage building, which we restored, started restoring age-old techniques and, and artisanal skills as well. In restoring the building, we use architectural skills, and in creating the costumes, we use textile skills. So both have been preserved here. Could you show us some of the products sure. you have? Because, uh, yeah. To give our viewers an idea yeah. of uh, what exactly is available here. Actual heritage products, <coughs> are they brand new? They are, they are, they are, these are all brand new. Okay. Uh, using the finest materials okay. and techniques okay. uh, that we have revived in our own workshops. Okay. Many of the uh, artisans used to work for the former royal families I'll take on and uh, were jobless or working as yeah. garage mechanics or in yeah. you know restaurants and we brought them back, okay. gave them the dignity and yeah. and restarted uh, the fine works done in Palace Ateliers. Okay. You know, this is a beautiful lenga. Mm. Now what is what is this kind of embroidery mm. was done in a Jhangi period. It should be known that you no know, uh, Aini Akbari, the, doctor, the biography of Akbar, as well as Patshanama, which is the biography of Shah Jahan, both record that the Poshak Khan and the garments were made in Ahmedabad. Mm-hmm. And this kind of embroidery with Zari thread and Kachaka Sab and Marodi work is a refinement of, you know, our craftsmen from Gujarat. Wow. So this, these are each flowers applique, the thread applique to create this, this pattern. Gold, stre- gold thread? Yeah. Well, this is fine zari that will not go black. Oh, it right. is not real pure gold okay. um, because that can only be made on commission. Oh, right. But this is a really heavy <coughs> product. Yes, it's a very beautiful product, but it is not, it is comparatively less in weight than what people, bridles wear yeah. today. Yeah. But this is a fine bridal wear piece yeah. taken from the inspiration. And you see the motives there, you know, we have the tree of life, which is a very important auspicious symbol in Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. Mm-hmm. But also surais were used very delicately in the Mughal era as well. So it's combining the Mughal and you know Islamic influences in the Indian format and creating the tree of life. So you see the beginning. So this is the tree of life, which is one of our most auspicious symbols across culture. Wow. And uh, you know, on a full sharp pink with Diane Wheeler, who was the head of the Metropolitan Museum and American Home, mm-hmm. has a very famously said, shocking pink is a navy blue of India. So this is a, you know, a beautiful color. I'm looking uh, for the price tag actually. <laughs> price tags are on request. Yeah. <laughs> These are more artisanal <laughs> beautiful pieces. Meant, for, meant to celebrate art. Um, commerce is a byproduct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, dear viewers, you are going to have to come and yeah, I'll request show, the price pack. Pack. Let me see, show you. This is the skirt and this is the, the sure. old Narvich, you know, you, you know the, the Mughals loved velvet. And then so did the Ottomans and you know, that was part of the silk route from going from China to Venice and silk became into velvet and the kings and emperors wore it as luxurious fabrics. So, this is a grand and beautiful so you wear a skirt and you wear the shawl and 
you are a princess. <laughs> I or wish we could have someone here to wear this for us. Yeah. yeah. But, but, anyway. but yes, you know, the, Roy, the Mughal princes and today's <laughs> young royals also, uh, I mean young royals, I'm not talking of just blue blood, uh, the new industrial tycoons or Bollywood stars are also young royals today and they, uh, they are patrons of this art. Oh really? Yes. Could you tell us who you... No names. Given. <laughs> no right. names given. But I just have to guess, uh, viewers. Uh, but um, when the royal... F I did do a show at Buckingham Palace mm -hmm. and I've done panels for the White House. Mm -hmm. So between the White House, the Buckingham Palace and everything underneath are covered. <laughs> you know, these are the two most powerful homes in the world. The rest... Uh, Rumang is actually Wait, let me helping me way. put something on. Yes. <laughs> and sweet hand here. Yes. Do I look like royalty <laughs> or what? <laughs> you know. Thank you so much. Of Rumang. course, of course. <laughs> you know. They're wonderful, you know. Being in Gujarat, it's important to preserve the crafts uh -huh. of Gujarat. So these are all the good things that we've done in Bandhani, you know, Ajrak, which are the traditional handcrafts of Gujarat. And um, my focus is you know, the idea of the Patona. You know, this was a beautiful Bandhani. Uh -huh. Okay. So these are the traditional you know, being the wedding season, this is a traditional craft of Gujarat. And then, of course, from the north, we have the velvets, okay. yeah, because it gets cold. And then these are the abhas, which are inspired from Kutch, the regions of Kutch, the worn by the abhas and patola and brocade. And this is mochi kam, which is you know, the cobbler stitch, which is the finest embroideries done even in the Mughal <coughs> time, and which again we have revived. And, uh, and these are the European influence capes. Okay. There were imperial capes and uh, the chogas, the official court costume during the Mughal era. And uh, brocade. This is inspired from the story of Sri Krishna with the peacock feathers okay. on brocade. And uh, you know, Gujarat being largely Krishna land. Mm -hmm. you know, Dwarka. And these are all the legal royal This costumes. is your Krishna collection. This is all Krishna collection. And, and these are the saris. Okay. Again, Ajrak and Bandhani. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then handcrafted, the beautiful princess capes and saris. Yeah. These are wonderful combinations for young women and uh, to have a little... Uh, Style, you know, the capes are European in, from origin, and the saris Indian, so it's a nice Indo European flair. And then we are have. Is mostly for weddings? Or uh, I mean, born any time? Well, depending on the lifestyle you live. Right. But, uh, yeah. and then these are our men's wear collection. So, uh, the kurtas, and these are the very soft tone on tone embroidery, and these are a little more, you know. Let's see embroidery is a very, very fine also. I mean, very you know, white and gold and ivory and gold is stone on tone. So this is uh, our little atelier in a historic city centre of Ahmedabad, reviving historic crafts of Gujarat. Thank you. fascinating interview with Umang Hati Singh. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. So thank you for watching Vibes of India and here's from me and my cameraman Yuvraj Singh. Bye.